Hello and welcome to this recorded presentation for the Inclusive Practices Professional Learning Project, sponsored by the Vermont Agency of Education. My name is Michael McShann I'm with the Swift Education Center, and I'll be presenting this portion uh, of the training that was a product of the Vermont Inclusive Practices Project. That project was led by Cindy Moran and Chris Kane of the Vermont Agency of Education. And these materials that you're about to see uh, were co-constructed with Don Miller, uh, who was also a presenter of this session. So let me give you a brief overview of the Vermont Inclusive Practices, Practices Project and the outcomes and findings uh, from that project. The project ran um, through uh, the 20 17 into the 2018 uh, school year uh, and through the summer uh, and you're seeing a presentation that was first provided in October of 2018. In this project, um, the, the big aim uh, from the Vermont Agency of Education was to establish uh, a study of uh, bright spots uh, within Vermont, uh, where students with complex support needs, the most extensive support needs, were being included in general education classrooms uh, for the majority of their day. Uh, Cindy Moran and Chris Kane uh, both uh, conveyed to us uh, the strong belief uh, that the Vermont Agency of Education held uh, regarding inclusive education practices, uh, where the kind of core thinking is that students with disabilities uh, can benefit from uh, full participation uh, in their local neighborhood schools uh, along their non-disabled peers uh, and uh, can grow uh, they themselves as well as their families and their classmates and their educators benefit uh, from their presence in our schools uh, so there's a benefits belief that was conveyed to us as well as uh, a core set of values uh, that both Cindy Moran and Chris Kane uh, conveyed during uh, our workshop session in October of 2018. And we thank them for their leadership uh, and the clarity of values from the Vermont Education Agency. Another why behind this project was also situated in the current research. Uh, the current research findings in the area of inclusive education for students with the most significant disabilities is actually quite clear and has been clear for uh, 40 years now, where we get very consistent findings uh, about the benefits of inclusive education for students with the most significant disabilities. I'm going to highlight some that were communicated uh, by Jennifer Kurth, uh, who's a professor at uh, the University of Kansas, and this webinar that she recorded for the Swift Education Center called Strategies for Including All Students. You can access the, her full presentation if you're interested on the Swift Education website, swiftschools.org. But it's really clear, the research for 40 years has uh, shown us that students with significant disabilities can exhibit growth in academic achievement when they're participating in inclusive settings. Uh, they show increased communication growth, uh, particularly for students who have limited to no uh, spoken communication. This is uh, particularly important. Uh, areas of self-determination, uh, employment skills, uh, as well as greater growth in social skills, largely as a result of access to social networks, peer models. Um, now, in addition to all of these benefits uh, for students with significant disabilities in inclusive settings, it's really important here to note that there's no evidence, uh, as Jennifer Kurth uh, summarized uh, in this uh, initial webinar, there's no evidence documenting any positive outcomes of segregation. So if we look at comparative studies, uh, looking at uh, students uh, who are matched on kind of age, and um, uh, learner characteristics, the profiles of their disabilities, um, and you look at the, the salient difference of them being either in inclusive settings or taught in substantially separate uh, educational, specialized educational programs. Um, over 40 years, there's, there's not a comparative study showing greater benefit um, to those students being educated in segregated or separate specialized uh, programs and classrooms. Uh, there has been consistent greater benefit noted 
um, when we look at their outcomes in general education or inclusive education settings. So that's a really big aspect of the why that the Vermont Agency of Education invested in this inclusive practices project. Finally, the current uh, placement data, least restrictive environment data that's collected for the, for the state and for the country reported from Vermont to uh, the US Department of Education shows that students with significant disabilities are most likely uh, to have limited access to general curriculum in general education settings. Uh, that students with intellectual disabilities or significant disabilities are spending the least amount of time in general education settings. So what did we do uh, during this project? Uh, there were four main aspects. One was to conduct a literature review to kind of update the findings uh, from the literature base uh, for the Vermont Agency of Education. Uh, and to conduct some studies of model sites uh, schools, districts, uh, supervisory unions within Vermont uh, where there may be some really helpful practices happening uh, that could be captured and reported uh, to other educators and family members in the state. So we conducted, uh, in partnership with the agency, conducted a series of assessments, observations, interviews with uh, staff members, administrators, uh, and then synthesize those findings across sites. Um, and uh, we'll, we note that uh, throughout this process, we were in partnership and in conversations with uh, those individuals uh, who were revising the MTSS field guide uh, to share our findings with them. Uh, and we were active in disseminating the findings through two all-day workshops uh, provided in two different locations in the state. So some key findings from, from model sites. Um, and uh, in another section of our recorded webinars, uh, you can see uh, um, outcomes from the interviews uh, with model site participants, um, with educators and administrators from around Vermont. Uh, so I encourage you to go to that section of the presentation to hear their voice. Uh, in addition to this quick summary of findings. This summary really sets up the next uh, couple of sections uh, of these recorded webinars. Uh, so please, for greater detail, go to those next sections of the webinars. Big messages that we saw across the, the sites is that there was a system and a framework in place that was guiding the work of inclusive practices. Um, that particular to supports and practices for students with significant disabilities, they were aligned to the broader system and framework. It wasn't like there was a, um, a system-wide framework for multi-tiered uh, supports, but then for students with significant disabilities, there was a different uh, framework or thinking in, in mind. So if there were school-wide behavioral, positive behavioral interventions and supports in place, then there was positive behavioral interventions and supports aligned work uh, underway for students with significant disabilities. And the beliefs about students with significant disabilities were also aligned to those broader systems and frameworks. So if a growth mindset approach was being applied as a way of demonstrating high expectations for all learners uh, in a given school or district or SU, that was being applied to students with the most significant disabilities as well. Uh, if there were uh, expectations or beliefs about the importance of collaboration uh, across uh, educators and family members uh, in the education of all learners, then that was happening for students with significant disabilities as well. Uh, and we would point to those uh, beliefs as being central uh, to the success for students with disabilities in general education settings. The next section of the presentation, which will uh, recorded webinar is presented by John Miller, uh, will go into examples of the system-wide uh, frameworks that we saw that apply to class, grade school, SU, and the broader community. She'll be highlighting multi-tiered system of supports as a framework uh, aligned to the key findings we had with your model sites in Vermont. The next recorded webinar uh, that you'll see will focus on membership and participation uh, and learning um, aligned to uh, what's happening for the grade level, uh, general education classroom communities, 
uh, what, look, what it looks like to participate in tiered instruction and the learning of content aligned to grade level standards and the role of teaming in pulling that off. Uh, all four of those uh, key practices were observed across our sites and examples of those can be found in the recording on membership and participation uh, by myself, Michael McShan. In both of those recorded segments, you will find embedded uh, examples of the beliefs uh, that I've just referenced here that were also uh, identified at the model sites. So please uh, look forward to the uh, other aspects and recordings from uh, this project. Please download all of the materials that are posted in conjunction with these recorded webinars. And thanks so much for all that you do uh, for all the learners in Vermont.